are a child, you need to remember mm -hmm. that you are small and weak <laughs> and that everyone is better than you. It's too early. It sure is. Welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. Woo! Bummer news Woo! day! All the news is back! Woo! Everyone is doing crime! <laughs> Terrible <laughs> things! <laughs> I'm doing them too! <laughs> yeah! There he goes. I love to shoot a gun! Woo, America! Ow! Good morning, everybody. Thank I'm you even... so much for joining us. This is copyright infringement! Woo! This is the, these are in the first few seconds of the episode, Anthony. If you put copyright infringement in the first ten seconds of a YouTube video, you go to the special YouTube camp for re-education. Yeah, they say you got to respect brands. Who's your favorite brand? They say. Yeah, name your top ten favorite brands. Right. Yeah. And then they go, and what brand don't you like? And if you even answer one thing, they go, surprise, that was a trap. You're supposed to love brands. You love every brand. Yeah. <laughs> brands are people too. You say, my favorite brand is Roblox? And they go, yeah. All right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we like that. Yeah. Yeah, we like that. That's good. There's child labor at Roblox, and it's good. They say it's good. We'll we're gonna talk more right about that. We're going to get right into it. Don't you worry. Uh, we're also going to talk about the uh, atrocities being committed by Deck 9. We uh, yeah, hey, <laughs> if you thought that maybe you were just allowed to have one piece of media that was a soft queer story that made you feel good, we would like to make you feel bad about it. <laughs> yeah, get wrecked, everybody. Yeah, no joy for the gays. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not allowed. A tiny X. Yeah. A tiny X that says no joy. Yeah. Uh, there's there's some other stuff. There's a picture of a new live action Frankenstein that's so funny. I can't wait to show it to I... you all. I'm obsessed with this picture of the live action Frankenstein. I love it. I can't wait. I can't wait. wait. I, uh, there's a bunch of other stuff, but hey, yeah. if you enjoy us coming to you and sifting through the bummer news for you, be sure to like the video if you're watching on YouTube later. Yee. Give a thumbs up for bad times. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Too bad. I don't want to do it, though. Too bad. The title of today's Twitch stream was It's a Bad Day to Be a Child. Yeah, get wrecked, kids. <laughs> and not just for the usual reason, which is if Sage and I see a kid, we immediately push them down. Yeah. If I see a child walking down the street, mm -hmm. I just push him down to show him where I stand. Yeah. Just remember. And where they don't stand. Yeah, which is right in front of me. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. If you are a child, you need to remember mm -hmm. that you are small and weak <laughs> and that everyone is better than you. Yeah, my mother used to say that. That's right. <laughs> because your mom was a good mom. Yeah. That's what you need to teach children. Mm -hmm. You need to say, listen, kid, what do you weigh? 50 pounds? That's stupid. <laughs> what a ridiculous amount to weigh. You could just be tossed to, tossed aside. Yeah. And you will be. What do you want to just be tossed? Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna where are you gonna make money for the state? Yeah. Is what it was what we say. Yeah. And uh according to Roblox, you can start making money for the state just right away. Yeah. Earn your place in society. I'd like to think all of those terrible men on like dating apps and love is blind that say things like well, would I be able to lift you are seeing if they could physically throw someone. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they mean when they're asking. They're not being like weird and fat phobic. Yeah. They're actually just seeing if they would be capable of like. If needed. And a, it's a hurl. If yeah. needed and it's always needed. <laughs> could I throw you off a cliff? Yeah. <laughs> if we went on a vacation to the seaside, uh -huh. could I come back alone? Yeah. And after say, returning you to the sea. Yeah. And say, oh, she had the the woman sadness mm -hmm. so she returned to the sea so she returned to the sea like tony topaz in <laughs> riverdale season six that's right <laughs> that's right hey everyone um let's jump right into no no good morning alex you remembered today <laughs> we sound like the worst people <laughs> alex <laughs> yes what's the biggest kid you ever pushed into traffic um this is a trick question <laughs> why are they all huge? Uh, the only kid I've ever pushed into traffic was capitalism. Well, how big of a kid do you think you could? Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually think I could probably 
push a sizable kid into traffic. All yeah. right. Good would, you, would you like to fight a hundred duck sized children? Yes. <laughs> or, or one, one child sized duck? duck? It's not that much bigger than a normal duck. Ah, uh, have you I no, think... that's bigger than a duck, dude. What's the average weight of a duck, Alex? Could you look that up for us? Yes, I'll, I'll look that up for you right now, Anthony. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Get back to us with that as quickly as you can, please. <laughs> All right. Well, we've had fun, and that was the last of it. Yeah. Get wrecked, fun. 1.6 yeah, yeah. to 3.5 pounds for a mallard. Yeah, see, okay. that's a mallard. Yeah. yeah. That's Darkwing Duck was a mallard. Yeah, a canvas back up now, to this Darkwing moment. Duck had to be 3.5 as well. more than three and a half pounds. No, everything was duck-sized. They live in St. Canard. It's all duck sized. Okay. Like, do you think Duckburg is a regular sized burg? No, that's <laughs> duck sized. I suppose dude. they never really considered it. Yeah. But I just felt like by the way that they, you know, stood on and were humanoid in their. No, even the largest Beagle Boy is just a dog. Well, it was their humanoid shape and the stance that really kind of uh, skewed my perspective of all them ducks being have two legs. Three and a half sized mallards. Every duck has two legs. Huh. You ever think about that? <laughs> Every day. Every day. Every day. I Imagine. wake up and I go, I've got the same amount of legs as a duck. That's right. I've got the same amount of hours in the day as Beyonce. <laughs> and and I've got the same amount, amount of legs, legs as, as Unky Scrooge. Yep. I put my pants on one leg at a time just like a duck. Nope. You know what I mean? No pants. Only shirts. <laughs> That's why we call it Donald Duck in it. That's right. Don't do that. <laughs> Roblox right. loves child labor. Yeah, let's start there, I suppose, <laughs> while we're talking about pushing children into traffic. Uh, one of the executives at Roblox, so into that. So yeah. into the idea of it. Now, now this is not a new idea. There, no. have, been, there have been many uh, exposés, reports, mm -hmm. uh, large videos. My favorite one is by People Make Games talking about the, uh, the culture of child labor at Roblox, even if adults are the ones developing Roblox worlds. Which is not always true, actually. Which is not always true. Even if there are adults uh, developing Roblox worlds, mm -hmm. they are often employing tons of children. Yeah, so essentially, for those who are not familiar, uh, Roblox is a sandbox game. So much like you might be even familiar with like Second Life, mm -hmm. uh, it is a game where anybody can build in it and create new worlds. It was invented and by Tommy Tallarico. <laughs> the oof sound, at least. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he invented Roblox. Uh, but according to Tommy Tallarico, not only did he invent Roblox, he basically he, he kissed Sonic the Hedgehog with tongue. Yeah, uh, a lot the of things, American according to, do to so. Tommy Tallarico. That's but right. essentially, uh, a lot of people can... Uh, learn to develop they have their own kind of like coding mm -hmm. uh that you can make worlds in and uh, a lot of people making them are yeah. under 18 years old uh and specifically a lot of international children yep uh there is a there is a huge culture of companies starting up to make roblox content and roblox mm -hmm. worlds and then sort of luring children in by being like isn't this your favorite game mm -hmm. wouldn't you like to make stuff for your favorite game yeah. we will help you do so yeah and then immediately they find out that they are working as uh, unpaid labor well, to create content for the video game roblox some people because there is an ex an ex Change essentially on mm -hmm. Robux as currency. Yeah. Uh, some people are being paid extremely minimal wages to do this, which is where I almost think it's not that it gets worse because obviously unpaid child labor is bad, but sure. it really does. No, you can't you, argue that. But once if you pay a child for labor, it's uh, fine. No. no, unpaid is bad. But well, here's what we're going to say. I'm like, you can't argue that it's not child labor yeah. once you start paying them because you can be like, what do you mean? They're just playing their favorite game. What do you mean? But they're, once you start paying them to develop, they then came it's to like. Us. Really, really, there's no argument that it isn't yeah. child labor. You know what I mean? No, that's just a little. Uh, that's just a little Hanukkah gelt for the child labor. I mean, <laughs> yeah, for the children. yeah, yeah, for the child. Well. Let's read what the actual statement is, because previously Roblox has kind of tried to take the stance of like, no, everyone developing this world is over 18. Yeah, they're not. They're no, not kids. If Don't. we if we find out about that, we definitely say, hey, hey, mm -hmm. why are you doing it? Yes, we would never. But now they've given up on that. Yeah, they why have not? straight up given up on it. In a recent GDC interview with Eurogamer, uh, Stefano Carrazza, the studio head for Roblox, said, well, yeah, I mean, you could call it child labor. You could say, okay, we're exploiting child labor, 
but we but but we're really more like job creators. So they uh, the full statement is you can say, OK, we are, you know, uh, we are exploiting, you know, child labor. Right. Or yeah. you or, can say we're offering people anywhere in the world the capability to get a job and even like an income. It's just like even an income, like an income. It's sort of like an income in that it's in that it's Robux, which in the imaginary world of Roblox is sort of a, a currency that you would use. Uh, you could There's, say it's like an income. He continues saying, so I can be like 15 years old in Indonesia, living in a slum. Sure, like, and, like all people in Indonesia, sure. And then now with what? just a laptop, I can create something, make money, and then sustain my life. I love that we have gotten to the point where they sat in a room and they said, hey, is this normalized enough yet? I think it's time. I think we've normalized the child labor enough that we can come out and start really saying what it is. I think we've, we've been around long enough that it's normalized, right? Yeah. We agree? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think they're going to be fine with yeah, it. Yeah, it's going to be fine. What, okay, okay, wait, we, used to say, we used to say, oh, no, not the kids. But I think we've been doing this long enough now that we can come out and be like, yeah, the kids. Yeah, well, what if we said something like, well, we've heard from the kids and they said they don't feel like they're being exploited. Yeah. No, the, we're, we're airdropping Chromebooks into yeah. Indonesia so yeah. the children can so yeah. the children can go to the digital mines. Look, so all I mean, we're not giving them the laptops to be clear. No, they but have to pay that back. Slums they have, have to pay that back. Yeah. But these kids in the slums with their laptops yeah. could really learn something from this. Uh no joke, he did say that they've heard from teenage game developers on the platform, and apparently they didn't feel like they were being exploited. No. Said they felt like, oh my God, this was the biggest gift. All of a sudden, I could create something. I had millions of users. Yeah. I had so much money, I could retire. Said eight-year-old <laughs> said eight-year-old <laughs> David Jones, who then put a lollipop in his mouth and rode away with baseball cards in the spoke of his bike and said, it's like a motorcycle. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, when you're a little kid and you want to like buy something and your parents are like, oh yeah, that 18 cents is totally enough for this. Yeah. That's them being like, this is enough money to retire. No one's looking at the 45 cents on their desk. No one's ever seen this much money. I've never seen this much money, have you? Listen, if there's one thing you can do and you can count on, it's mm -hmm. that you can directly ask a child whether they are being uh, abused, groomed, exploited. exploited. They'll know. They'll kids know. know. Kids know. They're smart. Kids are smart about the world and they know when, when an adult is treating them uh, improperly because they have such a complete view of the world yeah. outside of their own experience. If you were being exploited, you know. Yeah, if the kids didn't like me pushing them down in the street. They'd say it. And they do. And shut up, kids. <laughs> shut up. Don't get in my way is what I say. He continues with, so I focus more, again, I don't really focus on the child labor of it all. No. I focus more on the amount of money that we distribute every year to creators, which yeah. is now getting close to like a billion dollars, which is phenomenal. It's like a billion dollars in the same way that this is like a job. Yeah, we're and just, it's like an income. Yeah, we're just doing a blue sky solution here. Yeah. Here. What does it feel like? Feels like a job to me. How about Feels this? like a billion dollars. He just doesn't stop. He said, and imagine like, I love that they kept in every like that this guy said. Yeah. I love it. I really do. We're you reading can this tell word when a word. reporter's trying to do someone dirty. Yeah. Because they don't have to do that. Nope. In transcription, you're allowed to remove ums and ers and likes. Like, that's journalistically okay. Yeah. Well, you can tell when a reporter's like, and particularly fuck this person. They said, uh, and imagine like the millions of kids that learn how to code every month. Mm. We have millions of creators in Roblox Studio. They learn Lua scripting, which is pretty close to Python. That's pretty close. You could get a job in the tech industry in the future and be like, hey, I'm a programmer, right? All right. Let's, I just want to, I just want to unpack that a little bit. Um, first of all, shut up. Uh, second of all, no, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You can't say that working in the factory gives the children a skill for later on in life. Yeah. That's not that's not uh, an argument that worked particularly well during the breakdown of the Industrial Revolution. Look at the dexterity that they're developing in their they're, little fingers. Their tiny little fingies just love. They love to reach into the it's machinery and get the stuff out. It's going to be great. Listen, sometimes the gears grind to a halt and we say, get in there, little buddy. Yeah. Get in there. 
And do kids occasionally lose uh, lose a fingy or two? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they grow back on kids, I think. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they do. Kids are like lizards kids in that way. Kids haven't said they don't. Um, children cannot tell you whether they're being exploited. K- children cannot tell you whether uh, an experience is going to be valuable to them later on in life. That's not something that they have, unfortunately, the, uh, the ability to do. The other thing here is... Um, you should not be able the you should not be able to list mm-hmm. children learning to code by being exploited as a thing and expect us to take it as what you what we're saying here mm-hmm. is that children should be learning more about computers which is true should they be doing that i don't know in school yeah yes should they be doing that in the uh the digital sweatshop that they call their only hobby? I'd say no. I'd say no. I'd say no. I'd say probably not. So during this interview, a PR person at some point interjected. And you know if the PR person actually chimes in, they have been sitting there sweating fucking bullets listening to this, right? They're listening to this guy go. And finally, the PR representative that was monitoring the interview goes, uh, I, I just wanted to note that the, the vast majority of people that are earning money on Roblox are over the age of 18. Because this guy was like, so what if it's all children? We don't care if yeah. it's children. Kids love being worked. Like yeah. kids love to work. It's like the kids got to work. And look, we're giving you know the kids you, opportunity to work. You know how you got to take a dog out and and just like walk the dog for like four or five miles a day. Like a dog would love to be walking all the time. A child yearns to work. These kids, otherwise poor icky slums. Blah. Listen, if children <laughs> don't work when they're children, when will they work? Childhood is a magical time yeah. when they should be learning to be uh, oppressed by uh, by bosses they've never met. Yeah. They should be abused and screamed at and forced to work for pay. Right. Otherwise, when will they do it? It's a, it, When will you ever do that in your life if you're not given that opportunity? If you're not child? given the opportunity at eight years old, when are you going to do it? And it's wild that he says things like specifically Indonesia, because what we're pointing at is, hi, you are specifically exploiting children in other countries. Sure. Uh, and as opposed to even being like, hey, why don't you say something at home, bud? Why don't you say something at home? Yeah. Why don't you say something like a kid in New Mexico, right? Yeah. Uh, the poorest state in America. Uh, why don't you say, what about a kid in New Mexico who's 15 years old and wants to save up for a bike? No, they say a kid living in a slum in Indonesia. Yeah. That's weird. That's fucking weird. That's weird, dude. But the reason they're doing it is because the reason the reason they do it is the reason all of these tech uh, all of these tech bros since the dawn of the internet have been manipulating uh, these global markets. The reason is they can say a child in Indonesia and most people have been conditioned to go. Well, I don't know what the labor laws are in yes. Indonesia. I don't know what it's like for a child living in Indonesia. Yes. So perhaps. This is better for the child. Right. If you say New Mexico, uh, people go, wait a minute, that's America. I know where that is. <laughs> also, though, a good amount of Americans would be like, like, yeah, in Mexico. New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, sort of Texas is what most Americans say. Yeah. But if you say it's an American child, they go, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Is that American child uh, at least 14 and has permission from their parents? Because you can skip their water breaks if there's permission from their parents. Hey, uh, as somebody who uh, child labored, all you have to do is get a work permit. Yeah. You just have to go to an office and have your parents say, I'm allowing them to work. Yeah. And that's it. And then you can just go to work. You can just go to work all the time. Whatever. Kind yeah. of do fucking whatever. Uh, it's, it's a thing. We literally you, have a whole system for it called work permits. Yeah. And then you can go, they go, well, you have to make sure that the kid is getting educated. And then you can also sign a form that says, don't worry. I'm educating my child and it's good. And they don't check. They just don't check. They don't check. They just believe you. They just don't check. Isn't that wild? Anyways, there's also a lot of sociological and psychological studies that have showed that people lack empathy for people who uh, they cannot see or do not look like them. Uh, So if you've got a bunch of like, uh, you know, white pearl clutching parents in America that would otherwise be concerned by the concept of child labor, uh, they don't apply that to brown kids or they don't apply that to kids in other countries that they view as like impoverished and they're like, oh, it's probably good that that right. kid can provide for their family yeah, because exactly. they have no interest in actually, uh, they they don't believe that other children should get the same childhood as their children. Well, that's what, they live in yeah, all these poor places. They live places. in these other, uh, these other places and they go, we don't know what their st- we don't know what their standard of living is like, but surely it's not as good as America. Yeah. Uh, and this is something that the tech industry has been doing 
uh, from Go, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this idea of the uh, the first the first big thing in tech that was outsourced. I mean, obviously, was the actual manufacturing. But mm-hmm. after that, it was things like call centers, yeah. and there became that joke of like it, they they spun it into a joke in America, where it's like, oh, you call and you get the you get the call center in Southeast Asia, and uh, they talk funny, and uh, <laughs> boy oh boy, is it silly. But we're doing good things for people over there. And then you got to the second wave of it, which was like the Tim Ferriss four hour work week. Why yeah. don't you just find a person to personally exploit for your personal life yeah. and pay them a percentage of your income and, uh, and make them do most of your work for you. Cause they'll love it. Cause they don't make as much money as we do. Yep. Uh, and now it's trickled down to the, uh, the children and the Roblox. Flying squirrels said also minimum wage is lower when, when <laughs> here's the thing, they don't have to pay any kind of minimum wage. These people are doing it on mm. what is like a freelancer volunteer basis basically yeah they're not they're there not, is no wage yeah they're doing it on like a uh, a lot of them a lot of them even if they get paid they get paid in robux yeah and if they do get paid in robux mm-hmm. that's even one of the luckier ones uh some of them do not get paid in any form of currency yeah. real or imaginary other than like we will put your name on as like a mod or a developer yeah. of this roblox world and to be clear this also is happening in America. Yeah. He just specifically isn't referencing children in America because white people only have empathy for American yeah. or European children. That's the thing is it's we don't want to say that they're just doing it to to kids overseas. Yeah. This is just his rationale for it. Yeah, he's specifically citing like, what? Well, well, a 15 year old in Indian. And he's also trying to pick that age where he's like, you know, they're in the meeting beforehand and they're like, hey, what age do you think it starts sounding okay? Because we do need to justify that we've got some real youngins in there. 14. 14 yeah. sounds good. So if I said 15, it's like, that's a, a, a practically, a, that kid can make his own, that adult. Basically. There was literally somebody in our chat that mm-hmm. talked about how their first job just now in live yeah. studio audience was at 15 years old. Yeah. Uh, my first job was at 15 years old, but here's the thing. Mine was my, at eight. My job was seven. At, at 15 years old. <laughs> I was being paid minimum wage uh-huh. and I was only allowed to work a certain number of hours a day and yes. a certain number of hours a week. Yes. Uh, so when you get your job at 15, mm-hmm. it's more like, like it's cute. You know what I mean? Like I went and I worked at, I worked at like a snow cone stand, Sure. you know, and I got paid, I got yeah. paid hourly and I was, I could only work like 10 hours a week Yes. and you make a little money. And yeah. this is not that this is children getting berated by strangers over discord mm-hmm. for not turning in the Lewis scripts on time to yeah. make SpongeBob throw candy at right. Roblox players. Yeah. Your Peter, Griff- your Peter Griffin character <laughs> is not crawling like a spider enough. Right. Can you make it, can you get into the code and make it crawl better? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are sharing what their, uh, how old they were at their first job. Mm-hmm. Uh, Distorted said I had a paper route starting at 13. I have never met anybody that has actually done a paper route, but it's one of those go-to things that people name as like a job yeah. they had as kids. But I've never met anybody in real life who has done a paper route. And when people say that, I think you're lying. Yeah. Well, usually, <laughs> usually these days, if it's a paper route, paper routes are like really intense. Yeah. You've got to deliver to so many people. But usually if people say that they had a paper route, it's mm-hmm. usually for not the big newspaper in the area. Yeah, it's, for like it's like some a local, local yeah. thing. But, um, and yeah, they don't do kids anymore. Well, hey, uh, I would love to know, everybody, let us know how old you were when you got your first job and uh, what you thought of it. Right. I'm uh, curious. Castulu in the live studio audience is saying, my dad had me working his ranch as soon as I could walk, so I'm not seeing a problem with this. Here's the here's the difference. Uh, there are a lot of differences. That, and I, 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 I think knew that this, might be sarcastic, right? Oh, okay. That I might think, be sarcastic. I think I'm guessing. But I'm just guessing. in case, but just in case, yeah. I do want to say this because there are people that have that started working at their, yeah. uh, at their parents' jobs. Yes. Uh, which is a different legal thing. Oh, hundred percent. If your if your family owns a restaurant or, yeah. or owns like, or is, uh, you know, you own a farm or something. Yeah. Cause I knew kids who grew up like that. Oh yeah. It's a different story. If it's your family business, yeah. you are allowed to work it and you are allowed to work it for free as right. long as it's not during school hours. Yeah. And you can prove that you're not harming the material mm-hmm. quality of your child's life. And now, mind you, are those things monitored? No. A lot of the time, kids are still exploited working in their parents' businesses. Yes. Uh, a lot of the time, too. Uh, hey, if we just had like a universal basic income, kids wouldn't have to work and they could actually be children. Uh, but, you know, a 
all of those things aside, Cass mm-hmm. said yes, it definitely was sarcastic. Mm-hmm. I like it's the difference for me of like my my family had uh, worked in the automotive industry when I was yeah. a kid. They they repaired cars, right? Yeah. Uh, and I was in the body shop sanding cars when I was a kid. That's not my child labor. The other one is. The other one is your you know, The other one is. And maybe if I hadn't yeah. done the other one, that would be what I thought of. But yeah. uh, I think my first like normal job, I think I was 15 and I started teaching at a dance studio. Mm-hmm. I was teaching kids classes at a dance studio. I think that was my for- first like normal human job that yeah. wasn't in the entertainment industry, but I was still working consistently I think seven in the entertainment industry. Yeah, I think I... Um, I think when I was a kid, you know, I started off babysitting and stuff like that. Yeah, like I did babysitting. I like got 11 or 12. And then maybe like my first actual job was like mowing some lawns or something okay. like that, like 14. What about you, Alex? How old were you when you had your first job? It was babysitting for me as well. I did a lot of babysitting. I would say also probably 14 or 15. Yeah. Um, but they were like babies who would just sleep. So I would yeah. just be in the apartment to yeah. make sure that someone was there in case a fire or right. whatever. What about or a first? cat or a cat went up to the baby and tried to suck yes. the breath out of its mouth. You know, yeah, that was a real danger. Happened. In New York City apartments, there are a lot of soul sucking cats. Yeah. yeah. What about first, like, I've I've signed an employment deal. I'm hired by a person outside of my, like, community. I worked as a host at a restaurant, I think at 17, 16 or 17. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people are sharing, uh, like dog walking, babysitting, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, people working at restaurants and things of the sort. Yeah. Stocking shelves. Woof. Uh, said graveyard shift stocking shelves at 13 at a Walmart in California. That doesn't sound right. That sounds so bad. That doesn't sound right at all. Uh, huh. 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 Not good. Not I don't good. know about that. Not good. Yeah, I'm going to put a pin. We got to put a pin in that one. Worried about you for that one. Uh, Anyways, uh, if you're watching later and you want to leave it in the comments, uh, I would love to hear about it because there's always this thing that I get into where uh, a lot of kids that want to get emancipated uh, do need, and I I can only speak for, I'm only going to speak for like American kids because like I'm not going to be the person who claims to have any kind of- all American children. Damn right. Uh, Because I'm not going to claim to have any kind of insight into what- I, I will not in any way think that I know anything about other communities, but yeah. um, there is the argument of like, well, what about kids that need to get out, right? Uh, they need to be able to get a job. Okay. Sure. And you're like, yeah, that still only starts at a certain age because they wouldn't be able to anyways. Yeah. Uh, but then you go, well, what if we just fix the system that made it so that uh, kids needed to yeah. be on their own? The, the, what if we just... Hey, America... The answer to everything is not the exploitation of labor. That can't be the answer to yeah. everything. Yeah. Can't be like, well, what about a kid that needs freedom? Put him to work in the mines. Right. That's freedom. That's freedom, baby. America. Work into the mines on your own terms. And yeah. by your own terms, we mean our terms. Yeah. <laughs> the, ex- the only escape for an abusive situation should not be mm-hmm. an exploitative, yeah. potentially additional abusive situation. Right. Yeah, oh, if you're what being exploited or abused by your parents, why don't you go get exploited and abused by capitalism? What the fuck, y'all? Hey, at least it's familiar. It feels like home. Yeah. Yeah, when capitalism kicks your ass, it really just feels like home. Uh, hey, let's get the other big one out of the way while we're talking about being exploited. All right, uh, here we fucking go. Let's talk about <clears throat> Deck Nine. If you're not familiar with Deck Nine, Deck Nine is the company that took over the Life is Strange games after Don't Nod exited. So Don't Nod made the first two Life is Strange games, uh, and then the Life is Strange prequel, uh, Before the Storm, and Life is Strange True Colors mm-hmm. uh, were both made by Deck Nine, who took over. Uh, people have uh, very positively responded to all of the Life is Strange games, particularly mm-hmm. people in the uh, in the queer community. Yeah. Uh, really enjoy Love L- Life is Strange. It's a good game. Uh, it's a good series. It has a lot mm-hmm. of positive messages. Uh, apparently, uh, that was... Um, that was fought very hard for because uh, there were hidden Nazi symbols uh, placed into the Life is Strange games uh, before launch, and... That's not the worst of what was going down. IGN calls it the tip of a toxic iceberg. Uh, So here's what was going down at Deck Nine. And you know that's something when IGN says it. Yo, if IGN, (laughs) you also know that if it's a real headline on IGN, it's Duck Valentine. And it is Duck Valentine. All right. A friend of the show, Duck Valentine, uh, did some investigative journalism on on this and found out, here's what was going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, Basically... Developers started noticing references to the number 88 in the game. They went, hmm. And somebody flagged it and they went, hey, just so you know, 
uh, we probably didn't know that this was the, you didn't know, but yeah, you probably uh, just picked a random number of hey, every number. Yeah. One of the devs was like, Hey, you probably don't know that this number is like, it's not good. It's like associated with, and, and leadership was like, Oh, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. We'll do something. We'll do something. Oh, then sort of nothing happened. Uh, How odd. You would think it would be an extreme <laughs> level of urgency if you found out that you were accidentally doing Nazi dog whistles. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, the 88s disappeared and were replaced by 18s. Uh-oh. That's another bad one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, you can get it wrong once. Sure. But, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? Y yeah. <laughs> then all of a sudden... Uh, there started being like Hegel runes in replacement for numbers. Uh, then there started being uh, some some Reddit, some some of the good gamer words from mm -hmm. Reddit started appearing. Some yeah. of the memes mm -hmm. started appearing, uh, and people went, "All right, that's enough." And when they said that's enough, it's because this was basically the final straw at Deck Nine. It turns out that when you start digging into what was going on at Deck Nine, obviously, there was a lot of crunch and mistreatment of employees. Obviously, we're talking about a game studio. Mm -hmm. um, it, a lot of people who worked at Deck Nine said that it seemed like Square Enix mm -hmm. gave this franchise to the lowest bidder, and we were the lowest bidder. And we were being treated as though we were the lowest bidder. Then... As they started going deeper and deeper into it, it turned out that Square was putting like a lot of pressure on Deck Nine, mm -hmm. particularly about story. They were micromanaging story. Now, of course, the first two Life is Strange games were known for, uh, like we were saying, queer representation. Yeah. A, a lot of a lot of representation, really, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of sensitive handling of things. Apparently, uh, higher ups at the Square Enix office were made uncomfortable by that. Maybe it was just a little too uh, progressive. If only there was a buzzword that people used all the time yeah. to minimize. Yeah. That we've learned is a word that people use when they really just want to say a slur. Yeah. But they can't say a slur in that setting. Uh, I'm not thinking I can't, of I can't get it. I can't get it. Um, uh, and now, mind you, once again, this is the game that had Nazi symbolism in it and racist memes already that they're concerned might be. Uh, a little too progressive. Sure. Now, uh, basically, what's happening is that like leadership, creative leadership here, uh, alongside complaints of low pay, difficulty getting promotions, mm -hmm. uh, the aforementioned crush, like any time a woman or a person of color wanted to get promoted within Deck Nine, yeah. it literally took everyone in the company like pushing for that person to get promoted. Yeah. We need the right person in this position and it's this person. And uh, the leadership at Deck Nine would be like, what person? We don't see that. What person? Where's this guy? Dave? Are you talking about Dave? No, we love Dave. We're saying yeah. Dave. Like, yeah, oh, hell yeah, Dave. Dave. Um, so uh, basically, mm -hmm. uh, they would promote people uh, and also uh, management was in place. Mm -hmm that would allow numerous instances of toxic behavior to go un unaddressed for months on end, mm -hmm. uh, specific accounts of sexual harassment, bullying, transphobia, and an otherwise toxic workplace. Uh, multiple people remembered a senior programmer who frequently made sexist remarks and crude jokes with racial and sexual undertones. Uh, one person recalled him repeatedly harassing a young female producer, frequently speaking over her, invi invading her personal space, and blocking her from grabbing items. Uh, there was apparently a narrative director. We're going to hear a lot about this narrative director uh, that was basically would like uh, uh, ask women like, hey, can I walk you to your car and then like hang out at the car and not go away and like lean into the open door. And people were like, never made a specific move, but I realized that I had put myself in a position where this guy was just lingering and kind of had me trapped in my car. That's um, a move. It's a move. It's a move. Uh, multiple women described uh, described this, uh, this creative lead as, a, um, as somebody who would love bomb young women when they first met. Uh, stayed late at the studio to talk to them, invited them to lunch, dinner, drinks, movies, or even his house after work, um, would text them after hours about personal topics. Uh, and then this, uh, this creative director, whose name is Zach Garris, uh, Zach Garris apparently, um, 
wanted to uh, really wanted to push for a lot of things in the content of the Life is Strange games mm -hmm. that made that made people very uncomfortable. And uh, he did not like anybody who anybody who basically said his ideas weren't good. Yeah. It was Zach's going to come up with the ideas. Mm -hmm. He's the narrative lead. He's going to yeah. come up with the ideas. And you are going to tell Zach that he's a good boy and these are good boy ideas. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing. But um, some of the things that, and I, I want to say this is a little sensitive, but uh, some of the things that he wanted to add into the game uh, had really no place being in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, there, he, he was advocating for a scene yeah. uh, where Jed was going to roofie Alex at a bar mm -hmm. and then take Alex out to the woods and attempt to murder her. And the writers said, whoa, what? whoa, 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 whoa. Where is this coming from in the tone of this game? Where is this story coming in? How does this fit in? And not only that, are we going to address this story? Are we going to unpack it? We don't have time in the game to to explain where this is coming from and where it goes afterwards. No, it's just a random male power fantasy that he thought he would enjoy having in his game. Yeah, he literally just wanted to put it in as a choose your own adventure. Either you do or don't get roofied and then it's over. It's over. Look, every night going to a straight people bar feels like a choose your own adventure of getting roofied, but I don't need that in my escapism video game. Um, people were saying that at a certain point, our job became finding a way to couch feedback in a way that Zach would hear and understand and not blow up about, as opposed to actually giving feedback and, you know, contributing to this game. Yeah. Meanwhile, you've got Square Enix, who's mm -hmm. trying to keep a, a lot of progressive content out of the game, and not just progressive content, but just people. content. People. Actual individuals. And Garris was very in support of that. We have in here that uh, he asked about removing a transgender character from True Colors uh, that took place very deep into development where the character was already very involved in the story. Uh, two anonymous individuals reported that uh, when the Deck Nine social team wanted to post something in support of Black Lives Matter, Garris specifically pushed back calling BLM a hate group. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Uh, said that he fought hard for the twist uh, that include, um, or for a twist in the game that included a problematic portrayal of migrant workers and needed to be changed. It eventually was, but he pushed hard throughout the process to try it's, and get that in the game. It's very interesting that um, he, he comes from a, and, and a lot of people, this is the problem with this whole thing. In the mind of this person, mm -hmm. you have to explain why a trans person should be in the game if you can't explain it, but you don't have to explain an attempted murder. How interesting. Or, uh, the exploitation of migrant workers. Uh, yeah, he said that uh, everybody on here was way too hung up on political ideologies in this game, which as a reminder, the existence of trans people is not political. Um, That's just people. Now, oh my God. Square Enix. Or decency to migrants. Yeah. That's also just, just people. Now, Square Enix uh, apparently was backing up a lot of these decisions. Uh, people were talking about how right up until the end, and even Rebecca mentions this in the article, they put an embargo in all press materials, including pre-review press materials and uh, reviews that said, you cannot mention that Alex is bisexual. Do not mention that this character is bisexual. You are under no circumstances to, to mention that. If you mention that, if you break the embargo, there are big consequences. A lot of develop, like when you read, when you read uh, video game reviews or you read video game mm -hmm. sites and you're like, why didn't they mention this? Yeah. It's usually because of some fucked up embargo mm -hmm. where the company goes, hey, if you don't follow this embargo, mm -hmm. we're going to consider you somebody who doesn't listen and follow directions. And then we simply never send you a game to review ever again. Yeah. And not a lot and of uh, blacklist you most likely. Yeah. And not a lot of. um and these PR teams don't just work for one developer or publisher. Yeah. There are like three or four big PR agencies. Mm -hmm. And if you get blacklisted by one of them, that's it. Yeah. You, you lose. There are very few outlets that are big enough mm -hmm. to say, fuck you, we're going to put this in the review. Yeah. Now, of course, as soon as the press material, as soon as the game came out, 
uh, everybody was celebrating the first by lead of a video game, of a major release video game. Mm -hmm. It became a huge thing. And then, of course, Square was very, very positive about yeah. it. But right up until then, they were like, no, no, no. Yeah. Absolutely not. Now, it should be said that during the um, during the development of True Colors, Zach Garris was, remo was removed from deck nine now wasn't removed left of his own volition how interesting how interesting uh moved over to telltale telltale by the way when they were asked about this went yo we had no idea uh-huh like nobody told us and while he was here he was cool we don't know what happened. I don't believe that. I don't believe it either. I don't believe it for a fucking second. I don't believe that a man goes to one location and is that blatantly racist, mm -hmm. homophobic, transphobic, sexist, horrible, like aggressive, violent misogynist. Yeah. And then at the other place, he was just fine. He was just fine. I don't know. We didn't see any of it. We didn't see any of it. I'd be asked... I'd I'd be interested to know what the makeup of what the demographic demographic makeup of employees was at Telltale versus yeah they said they didn't see anything Deck Nine but anyway the boys never see anything isn't that so weird but anyway uh, he left and then they were having some issues with the story I believe it wasn't on True Colors mm -hmm. or uh, it was on True Colors or Before the Storm I forget yeah. which one but um, they were having some narrative issues the game was kind of falling apart. And leadership immediately said, mm -hmm. well, we got to get Zach back. Mm -hmm. After everybody had complained about this guy. Yeah. Literally everyone was like, we were trying for ever to get this person pushed out because they were toxic to everyone. Mm -hmm. And then the second there was narrative issues on the game, uh, leadership immediately went, we got to bring Zach back. Zach's the only guy that can fix the game. It's got to be the special boy. Uh, and then everybody said, if you bring Zach back, we will we will quit. A few people did. Yeah. People resigned. People were mm -hmm. complaining constantly about it. Uh, and so they didn't bring Zach back. They just um they just had a third party consultant who writers were forced to have secret meetings with at his house, and his name was Gak Zaris. Mm-hmm. Totally different guy. Totally different. And instead of him having to come to the office where everyone is, where everyone has to be on their best behavior, we're going to send all those writers to his house. Seems safe. It's probably better that way. Um, so there you go. Basically, everyone that was interviewed about this said, hey, we don't want you to feel badly about life is strange we just yes. want you to know right. that every single thing that was in those games mm -hmm. that meant something all of the good things yeah we fought there were people that fought every day for those things to be there yes uh there were senior people in the writing staff that were queer and were fighting to tell these stories uh that were fighting to stay on this project to make sure that it wasn't lost to horrible people uh that went through a lot in order to do so so they do talk about the things that the things that are in there are very genuine uh that they do care about the themes that it is incredibly important that the game is queer it is mm -hmm. incredibly important what it meant to the queer community uh they say that the thoughtfulness and like exploration of these stories comes from people who really deeply cared and fought to make it happen yeah. uh, kind of against all odds there are I mean there were people on that team that got into games because of the original life is strange games like yes. these these sorts of things matter and mm -hmm. um, they just want like people are saying yeah. we just want you to know that like hey yes people fought for this if you appreciate it we love that you appreciate it because we fought hard to make sure that you could have it. And now you have to walk this complicated line of uh, how you support things going forward, mm -hmm. right? Because you've got the developers that are very worth supporting that are, uh, you know, queer people telling queer stories that fought really hard for this. But then you also have a game that is published by Square Enix, who uh, multiple people were told by Square Enix that they didn't want Life is Strange to be thought of as, quote, the gay game. So then you go, okay, well... <laughs> Well, do I want to give Square money? Yeah. How do we feel about that? Because I don't love it. Well, and here's the other interesting thing. Uh, they were saying that a lot of this, a lot of this came particularly from one Square office. I believe it was Square London, the Square mm -hmm. London PR office. And this is the other thing that we have to now navigate mm -hmm. is like, is that a culture at one of the offices or all of the offices? Yeah. Is, did every did other were there other people at other offices in Square that heard about how London was handling Life is Strange and go whoa mm -hmm. that's not good yeah we don't know um, it's it's 
increasingly tough. I can, I just keep thinking about man. Did did you were you a, a fan of the Good Place? Yeah, I loved it. I love the Good Place so much. Uh, you, you know, in the last season of the Good Place, when they're trying to explain that, like, hey, rules are a lot more complicated now. Yeah, it's it's harder and harder to just be pure good. It is. Yeah. So what do we do? Yeah. And, I, and like literally the angels are like, oh, I don't think we can change the rule. <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, that was a really great exploration of those things. Mm-hmm. I, I love that show. And I think it's worth a rewatch. Um, yeah. But, but that that really speaks. It feels like everything in capitalism. It speaks to a, a, everything that we all go through every day now. Mm-hmm. I feel like every situation is fraught. Yeah. I Like you're at the grocery store and you're just like. Well, I don't know. What do these cookies say about what I say about the situation in the Middle East right now? Right. Maybe I just want a cookie. Yeah. But it's like you have to put a little bit of thought into what you're doing. Yeah. But how much thought do you have to put into it? What things are we allowed to like and not allowed to Mm -hmm. like? Are we allowed to say that Hatsune Miku was the developer of Minecraft? Right. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) what do we do? And there isn't an answer to it right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Everybody has to, and it takes up so much brain space to navigate these one at a time, right? Because it'd be a whole lot easier if there was like a, a black and white answer to it of what to do with it. Uh, there's probably bad people at literally, not even probably, there's definitely bad people at every large corporation. Mm-hmm. There is bad people at every corporation. And you know, those people, you know how those people start out? Mm-hmm. As kids. That's why I push down every kid I see. Uh, people in chat are saying uh, it's literally the mm-hmm. gay game, though. It's literally it's the gay game. It's literally the gay game. It is the one. It's literally if the game. If you were like, name a gay video game, I would be like, life is strange. It's literally the gay <laughs> Slap game. Slap the button. Uh, this is Heather. It's like, no, not just the, it's about being gay specifically in 2014. Yeah. So is Tumblr. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. It's really, it's really very <laughs> I read Earth says, which soup supports Israel's right to exist but opposes the administration? <laughs> If I had to pick a soup. If I had to pick a soup based on that. A can of soup. And it's just like, I don't know. And then people will make the argument that we know too much about companies now and it makes it too complicated. And then I'm like, no. No, It just meant people were being silently abused. uh, And it's good to know about these things. But also individuals do not have the bandwidth to actually process that much information. That's right. So we do, at the end of the day, what I say is you do what you can. Yeah. That's it. That's all we can really say. And you know, the people, like we're saying, the people that were involved in the creation of the Life is Strange games are telling you they still want you to enjoy this. There were a lot of people that put their lives into this game. And if you saw your life reflected in it, mm-hmm. that makes them happy. Yeah. If you decide, now if you decide, I probably am not going to pay any money for these Life is Strange games yeah. if I know that the money goes to Deck Nine or to Square right now. Yeah. That's also okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you decide is personally correct for you is mm-hmm. all right. And a lot of people will always do the like, but what about the good people involved? Uh, and I have to remind you, there are so many other ways to support good people. If you feel uncomfortable spending your money somewhere, like you're like, hey, I don't want to support Starbucks right now, but damn, I want to be able to like, oh, but the tips for the baristas, just take the money you would have put it somewhere else good. Yeah. Just put it somewhere else Put good. it somewhere else. But that's, that's the thing. You is- can do it. And when you're like, what about the people at these studios? And this is a big one. This is a big one that people bring up for games a lot. What about the people at these studios? Thousands of people, hundreds of people put mm-hmm. their lives into this game. They're they not going to make any more money. Paid. They're not going to make any more money. They don't get residuals. That's not how it works. Do you know when you we, buy a game, these people are not getting paid. Do you know what we hope for them? We wish them a very better finding another job. Yep. (laughs) A very good, better job to find for them is what we wish. Yes. Uh, We we do everything we can to build up communities and companies that people can work and make a living at where they aren't terribly treated. That's right. That's that's the best option right now. Um, So that's that's the worst of the news out of the way. Okay, we did it. Uh, we did it. We got through it. Yeah. We got through the worst. Oh, no, wait. What? Uh, the Wii U and 3DS uh, online is shutting down. I wouldn't say that's as bad as the no, child just, exploitation uh, well, and listen. the uh, like labor violations and harassment, no. but it's pretty bad, too. No, it's not. But it's definitely not like a uh, like a an, a full upswing, what I, I would <laughs> yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to the good news We're catching immediately this on after. the way back up. Yeah, you can't just, there would be tonal whiplash. Yeah, yeah. We've got to do uh, just a slow uh-huh. leveling out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So basically remember that on Monday, 
every uh, all the online games for your Wii U and mm -hmm. uh, 3DS will no longer be online. The stores oh. will no longer be available. Yeah, you simply cannot uh, have have them anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're playing whatever was on the Wii U. Ah, uh, an online multiplayer Wii U uh, Star Fox. No, uh, what was an online for the Wii U? Uh, was it Smash Bros. Smash, yeah, yeah Smash, Smash, Smash. The, the worst Smash. Yeah, if you were still really playing the worst Smash. <laughs> <laughs> online. Yeah, if you were playing Yeah, if you were playing the worst Smash online or the um the bad version of the good Mario Kart. Yeah. Online. Online. You've got to get rid of that. Now um, the 3DS, I also don't play any 3DS games online. Yeah. I think the 3DS is a wonderful wonderful system. Uh now if you do want to play some of these games online mm -hmm. though, we will remind you of the existence of the Pretendo Network. We Pretendo. Now the the Pretendo Network is basically um, it's sort of like Insignia is for the original Xbox, where they mm -hmm. are attempting mm -hmm. to recreate the online infrastructure of these consoles. Yeah. All right. So the Pretendo is basically a free and open source replacement for Nintendo's servers for the 3DS and Wii U. Um, their progress is like. It's going pretty good. It says 72% right now. Yeah. Uh, basically, like, Mario Kart 7 is 50%. Uh, Super Mario Maker for the 3DS is 83% supported. Yeah. Super Mario Maker for the Wii U is 63% supported. That's huge. Platoon's at 62%. Yeah. Uh, will you show them this progress tracker? It's in, like, the bottom right corner of that page. Um, your friends and chat are basically supported mm -hmm. already. Um, this is great. Yeah. Uh, the services are free and open source. Uh, they've been used, they say that they've been made using clean room reverse engineering. So mm -hmm. Nintendo lawyers get stuffed. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, there are some, you know, if you have the original Splatoon, if you have the original Super Mario Maker, mm -hmm. you know, Mario Kart 8, that's great. Yeah. It's great that you'll be able to keep using it. And I love open source projects like this. Uh, so many consoles over the next few years mm -hmm. are going to like entire libraries are disappearing. Yeah. I mean, there's huge legal battles right now of legislation trying to be put in place about what companies can and can't do with games as a service mm -hmm. uh, and online games, games that require you to be online, even yeah. to play a one player game, which uh, we haven't seen a lot of go out yet, but in the next few years, what we're going to start seeing a lot of is like, a lot of the games that you play, single player games that require you to connect, when those stop being supported, you're going to have no game left. Yeah. Uh, so there's currently no legislation to really protect you from that uh, because they essentially consider you to be licensing the game while you have it in a lot of these user end agreements, which is fucked up. It's fucked up, but, uh, and but it continues to be the way it is because uh, we have no, no one, no consumer organ, consumer rights organization or mm -hmm. group of consumers mm -hmm. has really taken that to task in a court of law. Yeah. Basically because you don't want to do that until you absolutely have to. Right. Because if they rule against you in that, mm -hmm. then yeah, you really are just licensing software. We'd yeah. like you to say that we own our software. Yeah. Uh, and the last time, I believe end user license agreements, mm -hmm. the last time they went to court, mm -hmm. uh, were considered like, no, you can't make people exactly. say Exactly. You can't make people say that they're okay with not owning the thing you sold them. But I wonder if now, if that same case went to court, yeah. if there would be the same ruling. Well, they're working on it right now. That's what I'm, yeah. Yeah. I wonder so we'll if see same, soon. Yeah. This is a little different than the end user thing, but yeah. it is, you know, if you, right now, if your if your online game goes offline, uh -huh. they can pull down the servers immediately. Yeah, like you, they, can they just don't pull, owe you anything. They can just pull them down and be like, game no game no exist anymore. And that's the case for seventy dollar games. Yeah, not just free to play. They can just do that. Uh, this new uh, attempt at legislation also does reference specifically free to play games, mm -hmm. uh, but free to play games that have any sort of in-game currency that you can spend real money for. So if you bought, you know, something that has like skins that you can buy yeah. that they have to still be able to support in just enough to make a functional game where you can still access the things that you purchased Which and would play be the game. So huge. Yeah. Not just for these, not just for these online communities that love these games, mm -hmm. 
uh, so they don't have to make these third party servers. But just for the just for games history and yeah. uh, and for game preservation, yeah, uh, we've lost an entire an entire generation of games already. If you grew up playing mostly early iOS or Android games, yep. or uh, online flash games. Those games are gone. They're yeah. not preserved in the way games that games that were from, baked into Facebook, yeah. things like that, that were like huge parts of people's lives and like are really discredited mobile games and like browser games and things of the sort. But like those are those are games. Yeah, those are games. Those are video games. Uh, somebody's saying like weird question. Would an example of this be Suicide Squad or Marvel's Avengers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, basically. Uh, but it would depend on what the ruling of this is. Right. Exactly. So with with. Both of those games, there is, well, at least with Marvel's Avengers, there is a single player component that I believe is still available to you. Like you can always play the Kamala Khan uh, campaign. Yeah. Uh, Suicide Squad's a little different. Um, uh, somebody else mentions that like in Steam's end user license agreement, it says that you license the games. Yeah. Everybody says that right now. Yeah. But one thing that we know is that courts cannot enforce an end user license agreement on software. Mm -hmm. Uh and as far as the licensing, that's what this current case is about. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see if that holds up uh, because that's two different things. Mm -hmm. You signing the license agreement that acknowledges that you understand that you're licensing the game yeah. is different than saying legally we can tell you that you're licensing this game. Right. You know, one is the signal that you understand. Mm -hmm. The other one is an actual like law slash policy. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how that shakes out. They're still trying to figure out to what is considered a functional game too. So if you put it into the wording that they have to have a functional game, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Because it doesn't have to be a 100% of the game. You can take down certain features as long as the game is still considered playable right. and figuring what that is on a game to game basis and how to word it in a way that can't be easily exploited. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting as more and more things, and this is not just important for games, mm -hmm. as more and more things that we do become digital, become a license, right? People who had like people who have like voodoo movies, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What happens to my voodoo movies or my uh, my ultraviolet Blu-ray disc? You remember that ultraviolet mm -hmm. was the thing that came with like the download code and a disc. Yeah. And it's like, do I still have ultraviolet movies Dude, somewhere? I straight up skipped Blu-rays. I like think I've owned well, maybe two Blu-rays yeah. in my entire life. Well, that's how most people are with Blu-ray. But it's like I never I don't I don't even think I bought those. I think I was given those two Blu-rays yeah. that I've ever owned. Like I went straight from DVD to entirely digital media. I'm telling you, people are I think most people did mm -hmm. and now a lot of people are swinging back around mm -hmm. because of all the stuff that's going on with streaming services. Yeah, there's a lot of fear of losing access to your favorite things and the understanding that you don't have any rights to them. Dude, people are clamoring for the uh, for the Disney Plus shows that mm -hmm. came out on, that are coming out on Blu-ray. Yeah. People are like, I'm absolutely buying it. Yeah. Because what happens if it gets pulled off of streaming? And we've seen that to so many shows already. Yeah. Uh, the tension asks- Release me, Willow, cowards! Did you have to have a fancy TV for Blu-rays? You didn't have to have a fancy TV. You had to have a fancy player of some kind at the time. Like, if yeah. there were Blu-ray players, but also a lot of game consoles played Blu-rays and I never used it. Yeah. Like your PlayStation would play a Blu-ray, yeah. your Xbox played a Blu-ray. And I never. Yeah. I never. I'm curious. Did y'all did y'all have like a, a Blu-ray phase like you did DVDs? Like, I, did you ever fully transition to Blu-rays? Can I tell you something? And it might be my age. Can I tell you something? Hmm. I put in a Blu-ray like a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. I have a few like I have a few movies on Blu-ray, and then I have, yeah. I have a couple movies on like the 4K. Oh my God, Blu-ray. Yeah, that you would need a fancy TV for. Yo, this looks so much better than streaming. Yeah. When you watch a movie on a disc, it's like, even though Netflix is like 4K or whatever, or uh -huh. Disney is like 4K HDR, when yeah. you watch a movie on a disc, you're like, damn, that movie looks good. Yeah. Like, it's surprising. The only time I've watched something off of a disc in the last who knows how many years is at Hector Navarro's house. Yeah, he loves a 3D Blu-ray. Loves a 3D Blu-ray. Oh, my God. Incredible collection of 3D Blu-rays. He has fancy glasses. When I had to lose, when I, when I had to replace my 3D TV... Mm -hmm. Like Hector and I texted about it because yeah. I was I was in mourning. Yeah, I was. There were only two people that yeah. loved 3D Blu-rays, and it was, it was you and Hector. It was Navarro. me and Hector. If 3D Blu-rays have two fans, it is Anthony Carboni and Hector Navarro. That's right. If 3D Blu-rays have no fans, Anthony and Hector are dead. Are dead. Are dead. And Hector will outlive me. A hundred. That's what we've learned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. I still love 3d movies. Mm -hmm. I still, when I put in a disc, man, I I'm telling you, movies. 
I'm, I'm telling sorry. you. It's I had a gorgeous. good time watching them at Hector's and I think it was really beautiful, but the, the glasses give me a headache. Yes. Uh, when I saw Godzilla vs. Kong, we accidentally got tickets to a 3D showing. And don't get me wrong, it was fucking cool. It's dope as hell. But it just, I, I get a headache real bad and it ruins things for yeah, me. Yeah, a lot of people do. So I, like, I don't get the headache. I get the headache. The same way I don't get like VR sickness or whatever. I also wonder too, like I wear contacts and mm -hmm. I feel like it's worse because I'm wearing contacts and then I have these like Blu-ray glasses over it. I don't know. No, not Or if I've had to wear my glasses, it always gives me a headache but yeah, yeah. Uh, you got a man I'm telling you if yeah. you, if you get a chance to watch a disc watch it it's crazy yeah um uh well hey while we're talking about that I just really I, I've been the story has been in our spreadsheet since I know you've been so long ago you've been sneaking we don't I've just have been a trying to bring it back up what we don't have a spreadsheet what spreadsheet we, what this is all off the top of the dome. I just thought this was really interesting. Uh, it is an article about the way that YouTube's compression works uh and how if YouTube did not compress videos, because uh, creators are always complaining about the compression on their videos, right? They're like, yeah. my video looked so good, and then YouTube just ate up all the quality. Oh man, when somebody is like, when somebody is vlogging about the latest camera lens they bought, uh -huh. and they're making a coffee in slow motion, they often complain that making the coffee in slow motion just yeah. simply doesn't look as good. Like you gotta see the coffee in slow motion yeah. at their house on a on a calibrated monitor. Well, hey, you wanna know why? That's because if YouTube didn't compress the videos on its platform and let you put it up at the full quality, it would use over 100 times the entire world's internet's bandwidth. Just YouTube alone. I believe that would eat up well over 100 times the entire world's total internet bandwidth. Dude, you you ever look at those Blu-rays, they hold like 60 gigs or something for a, for like one movie. Yeah, and this, and YouTube has a, a billion hours served of video content a day. How much of that is people is is camera bros making coffee in slow motion? God, at least 100 million. Probably, 100 right? 100 million. Yeah. You ever I you you just got you just got a lot of equipment for the studio. When you were looking for equipment for the studio, yeah. how many times did you have to watch a guy in an un in an unbent cap brim make a slow motion coffee so you could find out whether the camera that you wanted had the feature that you I've needed? I've told people so many times <laughs> that uh, there's nothing that I hate more than having to watch a man in a hoodie explain a piece of gear to me. It's, I hate it so much. It's like it is, it, you have to. You have to. If you want to find out if that lens is good, or you want to find out if that piece of equipment works the way it says it's going to, you have to listen to a white man in a hoodie explain it to you. And damn, does it suck! Search for a written review of anything. I God, dare you. I dare you. I dare you to find. And then it's video equipment, so it's also like fuck. I kind of have to watch a video. You gotta on watch it. the quality. But hey, uh, if you want to recommend any cool tech YouTubers, uh, video gear, computer, anything that are not white men in hoodies, Lizzie Pierce. Yeah. Lizzie Pierce. Yeah, immediately. Absolutely. She's really good. Uh, sourcing from the community. If you have any that you really enjoy, let us know. I would love to watch their stuff. So Trisha Hirschberger. We love Trisha Hirschberger in this house. Yeah. And Justine, PBHD, of Justine. course. Justine. Absolutely. Marquez. Yeah. Um, to put numbers on this YouTube thing, uh, the current internet bandwidth comes out at 1.2 bits per second. No. Okay. There's a P. There's a P there. You're, you're talking about petabits. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Petabits. So 1.2 uh, bits yeah, yeah. is very small. <laughs> yeah, very little. 1.2 is just a little smoke. guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so if you assume streaming at 1080p SRD, YouTube would need 155 p bits per second to stream its content in uncompressed video. That's crazy. Maybe this is only interesting to me. No. I don't know. I think this is so wild. We're talking about how, like, streaming sucks and the quality sucks. That's why. Can you imagine? That's why. Can you imagine how much bandwidth it would take mm -hmm. to uh, to have a Zoom meeting with an entire symphony orchestra instead of listening to an MP3? Yeah. That would be fucking crazy. Again, all of the world's <laughs> internet is 1.2. <laughs> YouTube alone would need 155. I, it's, it's Sweet. wild how much, like, okay, here's why this is wild to me. Yeah. Uh, to put this in perspective, if that's how much data we're using, yeah. and that's how much just for one of these of these popular sites. Yeah, just YouTube. Just YouTube. And the internet is still not considered a utility that is required for participation in society. That feels weird to me. Doesn't it? That feels weird. And uh, listen, I'm not saying mm -hmm. I pay I pay a water bill. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When I say that something should be a publicly available utility yeah. that's protected, particularly like we're about to go back to, to court for net neutrality yeah. uh, under the new FCC chair who's like, oh, thank God she's better than the last FCC chair. Yeah. But like the returning of net neutrality laws, things like mm -hmm. that, why isn't the internet just a fucking, uh, just a fucking utility? Yeah. We totally skipped out on, on cable television. Yeah. We let cable television continue to be a premium thing, even though that was everybody's source of media and news for yeah. 30 years. Yeah. And now we're doing the same thing with the internet. Mm -hmm. Give us the internet. Give us the fucking internet. Give us the internet, cowards. Anyways, that was my random weird side tangent. Also, all of that is assuming that these videos are 1080. That's not even 4K, baby. How am I gonna see that espresso That's machine? Uncompressed. You know when he does the slow motion of him tamping the espresso? Of course, they always do. And they want it, they really want to flex their forearm when yeah, they do yeah, it. Yeah. On their perfectly white kitchen counter. That's right. Yeah. Uh you gotta you gotta do the 4K. Uh Liz, it's a utility in Korea, says Zephorn. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Also, uh, did you know? I don't know if you know that I this is just this is a cool fact. Drop are, a cool fact. Love a, a cool fact. Here's a cool fact. Did you know the reason that there are so many White pro is talking about gear? Yeah, uh, pro esports <laughs> athletes in South Korea is because after South Korea had an economic uh, collapse in 1997, mm -hmm. the government subsidized esports training, and a lot of young people couldn't get jobs, and so they just tried to get good. Hell yeah. Because it was a way to make an income in Korea. Hell yeah. They completely, after an, after an economic collapse, invested in esports and the internet. Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? Damn, y'all. Damn. Uh, that is a fun fact. That was a cool fact, thanks, Anthony. Thanks, man. I like fun facts. Yeah. Uh, I have no transition to this whatsoever, That's but okay. we have you a couple of to. things of like movie and TV news I want to yeah. get to uh, uh, yeah. before we run out of time. Yeah, sure. We got to do the biggest one. We got to do the biggest one. Like, what are you looking at? Oh, God. No, we're not going there first. We got to go like, here first. Leave me alone, Anthony. We I've already go got first. something. I mean, this is the biggest one. Fine. Show it. You may flash show it. You may show it as much as you need to. On Anthony's screen, it's fine. Hey, everybody. God, you wore the shirt for it. Everybody, the Garfield collectible popcorn container. It looks massive. It's huge. That can't be the real size. That's Chris Pratt's head, everybody. That's the size of Chris Pratt's giant skull. Uh, look at that. Look I've at the beautiful boy. I don't want it at all. That's I the don't baby, want it even a little bit. That's the baby Garf. I'm good. That's the baby Garf from the movie. You know I, the cute baby Garf? Yeah. 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 It's going to be, man, I'm going to put it up next to my Dune popcorn bucket. My, both of my totally appropriate popcorn buckets that yeah. show that I'm a well-adjusted human. Yeah. And here I am with the really cool Ghostbusters one. It's no Garfield skull. It lights up, dude. I'm going to eat. It rolls. I'm going to eat soup that supports the Middle East out of Garfield's skull. <laughs> I'm going to eat the most politically appropriate soup that shows who I am as a person <sighs> out, out of the Garfield's skull of a head. baby Garf. Horrifying. I don't like it. I love it. All right. Christian Bale. Heard of him? <laughs> is playing Frankenstein's monster in The Bride. From the Frankenstein region of France. Yes. Uh, in The Bride. And yeah. we just got a first photo. And the... The Jared Leto Jokerification of characters that we like is so fucking strange. What it's is gotta, going on? It's got to stop. Please show it to him. It's got to stop. What is going on? We got to knock it on? off. What is going on? Why is he fuck boy moving his hair back? What is going on? He's looking. He's like, he's, this is, he's literally damaged. Whereas the Joker what? says that he's damaged up here. The fuck? He's showing that he's literally damaged. I don't want fuck boy Frankenstein's monster. Dude, do you? Frankenstein is always fucking. Now, listen, we've done the tier list of the most fuckable monsters. And I got to say, he didn't rank too high. He didn't rank too high. And this guy's not ranking higher. I hate this. I'm covering my drink around this Frankenstein's monster. And not because he's a monster, because he looks like he's a frat boy that fell off a balcony. Now, if you're doing, <laughs> if you're doing Mary Fuck Kill. Uh-huh. Yeah, Herman Munster is a Mary. Like, 
Like, hey, and that's the catch best. Me. That's the best Frankenstein. Yeah. And all of these look. Mary Shelley had a lot of things to say in this story, but now here I am. I'm gonna be outside with my fucking pitchfork with my torches. I agree. We should run this guy out of town. Yeah. No. This man's is not welcome here. I don't trust him. Yeah. I don't trust I don't him. Trust him for a second. Uh, Slicky. Why is he doing that with his hair? Uh. So. This is a, uh, so Maggie Gyllenhaal is uh, directing this film and she released this. This is a black and white camera test photo. Uh, <laughs> Guys, he has a tattoo that he's showing like this that says hope. It says hope, which at least is like, it's it's more than like the, um, than the damaged or daddy, you know, at least it's a positive tattoo. What you can't see is he's got a live, laugh, love tramp stamp. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Nobody who touches their hair like that. Uh, 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 uh. uh so the bride follows a lonesome Frankenstein mm -hmm. as he travels to 1930s Chicago to seek help from a man called Dr. Euphronius to create a companion for himself, who, of course, is the bride of Frankenstein. Uh, things go awry for Frankenstein and the bride when their combustible romance, real, real Joker Harley energy, Real, um, real Bonnie and Clyde energy. Yeah, they can't just be like two people that are like in love and everybody's persecuting them. They have to have a combustible romance. Why do uh, you have to? Garner's unwarranted attention from both the police and a wild and radical social movement. Uh, Jesse Buckley will be playing the bride. Uh, it also has Peter Zarsgard, Annette Benning, Penelope Cruz, and uh, the spirit and ghost of Zack Snyder. All over it, unfortunately. <laughs> it really does. Unfortunately. I just don't think that we need a fuckboy Frankenstein. I just don't. I don't think that we need it. I don't think that it was it was called for. I think this is uncalled for. I think, honestly, if you just made a Frankenstein movie that was pretty faithful to Mary Shelley. We all want to fuck him anyway. This was, I mean, we haven't really had one. Yeah, because here's the thing. Here's what we know, okay? From a true Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Frankenstein's monster is kind of a soft guy. He's a soft. He's kind of a soft soul. He with cares. a sweet heart yeah. that maybe is just a little bit different. And he could maybe be the, a big gentleman to you. Honestly. And that's enough. Honestly, I'm going to say it. It's so weird that the person who cares the most about source material when making literary movies in Hollywood has always been Mel Brooks. <laughs> yeah. Mel Brooks is Frankenstein and young Frankenstein is the closest to Frankenstein. His Robin Hood is the closest to Robin Hood and his Dracula is the closest to Dracula. We could have just left him as a, a big gentle guy with a scar and don't worry, we'd all be down, but no. You've made him look like Jared Leto's Joker. Why? We've had the crow. Yeah. We've had, like, what is happening? How many more What's do we need? What's going on? Do you know what it is, Sage? What? Honestly, it's because, it's because they know someone in Hollywood found out how much y'all like the, y'all like the weird line cook energy. Women do like the weird line cook energy. It's the Pete Davidson thing. It's the MGK thing. And they're tapping into that. They're tapping into, hey. the, they're tapping into hey. women liking dirt bags. We do not like MGK. No, here we don't like MGK. No, no, no. I'm speaking for women. We don't like MGK. We don't like MGK. That's not true. Here's the thing. There is a, a, a male heterosexual idea of what women like. And it's not actually even what women no, I like. I thought that was Ryan we Reynolds. We don't like MGK. It I used thought, to be Ryan it Reynolds. It used to be Ryan Reynolds. It used to be Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is attractive to straight men. Right. Now it's MGK. They have this idea because Megan Fox liked MGK right. that we like MGK. MGK is gross. But what about icky, the icky? Okay. Creepy. But what about makes the makes me uncomfortable? I don't like the way he looks. I don't like the way he talks. I don't like the way he talked about Kylie Jenner in that interview. Sure. But MGK is like the slick PR version of yeah. the Pete Davidson line cook type. Ickier. Ickier, yeah. I'm way more I'm way more down with the but Pete is, Davidson. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. Is the, like, who I think is just going by M Machine Kelly now. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, Pete Davidson's <laughs> going by Machine Kelly now? <laughs> yeah. 
that's weird because yeah. that's going to cause a lot of confusion. Yeah, it is. Um, but I think that MGK is like the prototypical Hollywood version of the line cook dirt bag. I guess. Because they figured, they figured out that, that women, women want the line. Because what women actually want about the line cook dirt bag uh-huh. is they just want like, they just want the, like the dude who's, who's easygoing, who yeah. says okay to whatever. Yeah. Just like no thoughts, head empty. Yeah. You know? I'm going to tell this guy, I'm gonna, listen, you're just not going to argue with me. Yeah. <laughs> for once, I'm going to have somebody that's not yeah. going to argue every single little thing I'm with me. I'm all for people who want to date dummies. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. And not all line cooks are dummies. But when people say what they want from that is, that is what they mean. Yeah. It's just a different, it's a different type of like himbos and things of that variety. Dude, I didn't even notice that his his shirt or blazer or whatever yeah, what he's does it wearing say on there. I don't know, but it's got like, it's got like the Ed Hardy Vegas writing on it. Like it's, he's got embroidery on it. Yeah, dude. I can't get over the fact that they chose to use that photo of him pushing his hair back. I can't get over Out it. Out of all the camera tests they did, Maggie I Gyllenhaal, Maggie I, Gyllenhaal looked at it and went, that's the one. I can't get over this that. This is my Frankenstein. Now, what if they made a movie called my, my Frankenstein? And it was a sweet, it was a sweet rom-com. I would say you should have named it My Frankenstein's Monster, you fools. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to date the doctor when the monster's right there? Yeah, okay. Weird. Dating a doctor? Not that interesting. No. That's just what, that's just what every mom wants. That's just what especially our types of mothers want. Yeah, that's right. Said what I said. Um, listen. Yeah, Unsilent Will is saying gets people talking. Sure. Uh, Skywalker asked, what if the tattoo actually says hope instead of nope or nope instead nope. of hope? That'd be so funny. If it said nope, if he just like, if he was like doing the, the, <laughs> the tortured Joker like damage and he was like, yeah. nope. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me out. And then, and then he pulls it and then he pulls up his shirt yeah. and it just says tummy ache. <laughs> 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 Hear me out. We're past, we're past the age of the tortured man being attractive. We're past the age of, uh, of tortured men. I think we're over it. Yeah. I think the only thing you can be tortured by anymore is if you got a tummy ache. Nobody, nobody should still be attracted to, to tortured men or the, the manic pixie woman who yeah. is, who is usually just uh, a, a young woman who needs help. Yeah. <laughs> It's me. Just, you know. My Twitter bio, bio used to be Manic Pixie Nightmare. That's right. Um, one of my favorite things I saw on TikTok this week. Go on. There was a TikTok from a man who, uh, which is shocking that I started this sentence. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. There's a stitch from a woman. It's the only reason I'm saying this. Uh, he was That's like, my favorite seal song. He was like trying this weird thing of this like reversal on dating expectations and was like, if you can't afford me, like if you can't afford to take care of me, why are you, why are you even approaching me? Like, don't date me if you can't afford me. Right. Uh huh. And this woman stitches it and goes, no, I love this. I think this is great. I think that men should prepare to be kept. Yeah. I think men should be kept men. And you know what? We can't be expecting men to labor like this. We can't be men expecting men to use their brains like that all day. No, let's just take them all out of office. Let's take them all out of political positions. Let's take them all out of uh, any kind of high ranking business decisions. Uh, we can't be expecting that of men. That's too hard of labor. Yeah. We, we can't be making the men work that hard. Hey, let's just take them out of all positions of power. And you know what? Hi. They can cook. Here's the thing. I know, I know the lesson we're supposed to be learning and I know the bit that's going on right here, right here, right now. Mm -hmm. I'm fully putting out there. Would love to be a kept man. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. In my life. Listen, I had, I had a lot of ambitions. Mm -hmm. I simply do not anymore. Yeah. I would love to just, I would love to just be kept at home. Yeah. Men don't get to be kept until they stop also trying to hold office. But I can't make every man stop trying to hold, to hold office. Well, you should I make just, it your life's mission. Better start working I don't want for a it. life's mission. I want to be a kept man. Yeah, well, once you get all those men out of office, then you get what you want. If I was going to incite political change and reform, I would have done it by now. Yeah, that's all men. <laughs> Trust me, we know. We know. We can see you. 
Uh, anyway, The Bride is uh, coming to theaters October 3rd, 2025. They're not going to be selling the popcorn bucket Garfield skull there, mm-hmm. but nothing keeps you from bringing back Mm-hmm. the Garfield popcorn bucket or the Dune popcorn. Yeah. You could technically you could bring those back to the movies. You could bring them back every time Anytime if you, you want to. But what if we, we get a Frankenstein's monster one where the, the from the stitched point of the head, it lifts off and you're eating it in the brain You have to slick back his hair and tilt his head and tilt his head to get your popcorn. <laughs> you have to gently caress it before you're allowed to take right. a little popcorn from it. God, I hate this. Yeah, it's the worst. I hate it so much. Now replace that with a Garfield. You like it, right? Nope. Yeah, it's good. No, I hate I hate this this image. Yeah, it's the worst. I hate this character design. Uh, I hate what we're doing. I think it's so incredibly generic and boring. I think it's upsetting. I yeah. don't understand. Now, here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Okay. Mm-hmm. Compared to a lot of these other films, a lot of these things that are going on that are that are the Jokerfication of popular film. Uh huh. This is. I mean, we've got Maggie Gyllenhaal, we've got we've we've got Annette Benning, we've got Peter Sarsgaard, we've got we have I mean, this is a crew that might be trying to subvert this thing. Hey, Alex, show my screen. Let's just go really quick, okay? As compared to some of this. Corporate stuff wants wants you to tell the difference between those two photos. No, I get what I get that. For sure. Both have a scars guard. Corporate yeah. wants you to tell the difference between these two photos. Sure, but give, listen, just give us a minute on this. Is it possible for everybody else? This isn't. This isn't about what you were saying. This is about showing the people the 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 thing really quick. Okay. okay. Can you spot the difference between these two images? My NDI, I think, froze because it is no longer drawing it. There, there we go. go. That's the same thing. Yes. That's the same image. Yes. Are you joking? No, it's the same. So, but what I'm saying okay, is, now is, we can it, go back. is it possible that this is a crew? Mm-hmm that is going to try to subvert this thing that has become popular. I would hope so. No. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. I don't think they would release that image. I think that's super weird. Yeah. I don't think so. I think they were like, look, hot, right? You're into this, yeah? Yeah. No! You actually made him look like that. Unless they go, just kidding, that's literally not the character design. We got you, fools. April 5th? That's right. April no. 5th. I don't know. I don't know. I I I, tr- I I would like to not judge an entire thing by one photo. Um, but these, I, it's an important but, photo. It's an impo- no, it it's is an important photo. I try. I try to withhold until I've seen more. The same way I did on the crow as yeah. well. I don't. I judge as fast as possible. Where I'm just like, I don't know. I don't like the look of this. Yeah. But it's one. It's one image. Yeah. It's a burden that I'm always right too. But then the crow trailer came out. Uh huh. And we went. Oh no! This is what it is. It is what this it is. This is what it is. It sure is. <laughs> it sure is. Uh, Chaotique says, "What does the bride look like? We don't know yet." We don't know yet. Um, and Star Garden is saying if that's like the wardrobe fitting and test camera, they could change everything. They could. They could. They could. But they Who probably knows? won't. It, uh, it's not common for people to release an image and then redesign a character. Those things happen pretty early on. Sure. Um, so we'll, we'll keep keep an eye out for that and be sure to get your, uh, your fuckboy popcorn bucket. Yeah. Your fuck bucket. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah. Just get the, uh, yeah, AMC proudly yeah. is proudly offering to you a, fuck a commemorative fuck yeah. bucket yeah. for the release of the bride. Didn't we have something on failed save that we, it was the fuck it bucket, wasn't it? The large cup of coffee? Yeah. I think we were calling a giant cup for coffee a fuck it bucket. I think so. That sounds like something we would do. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. Hey, let's completely flip the script here to something. Oh, wait. You want to do that one? I don't know. Let's. We could do that. We gotta do both. Yeah, we're gonna do both. But okay. let's do, let's do that. Yeah. One yeah. First. While we're still on TV and movie news, we gotta yeah. show you. Uh, my God, this trailer, uh, Tales Ooh. of the Empire, baby. Uh, we should probably a little spoily warning. Skip around, I guess. Yeah, and we're gonna skip around, and we're gonna do a spoily warning. But this is a new animated series, six original shorts uh, for Star Wars, uh, called Tales of the Empire. And dang, dude. <laughs> okay. Dang, dude. Oh, my God. It looks, it looks gorgeous. It looks really good. Looks unbelievable. It looks really, Perfect really Thrawn. good. It also looks just as darkly lit as anything else on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, it does. Uh, I love it. 
I think this looks absolutely fantastic. Like I said, we're not showing the full trailer intentionally because we know that our video will probably get a copyright strike for it. So that'll be it for right now. Uh, these are releasing for Star Wars Day on May 4th, just a month from now. Very exciting. Uh, and it looks so good. I honestly, look, we've said it a thousand times. Mm -hmm. If you're not watching the Star Wars animated stuff, the things that they're doing in house over there, yeah. um, you're missing out on a lot of really good Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, the last few seasons of the Clone Wars were amazing. The Bad Batch has been unbelievable. Yeah. Um, all of this stuff has been really, really good. And to watch the evolution of that Clone Wars animation oh style God, and character yeah. design. It just gets better. Oh, my gosh. Re Rebels. Rebels was unbelievable. Resistance cool. was good. I mean, look, you got to check it out. <sighs> and lastly... Oh, wait, before we leave Star Wars, though, because we're in the middle of talking about Star Wars, okay. I do want to mention, uh -huh. hey, everybody, Star Wars, uh, my friends and, and co-workers over at uh, Lucasfilm are nominated for a bunch of Webbies. Oh, that's cool. Including uh, one for our Star Wars Celebration live stream last year. Uh, please, if you would, go vote for Star Wars in the, uh, in the Webby Awards. Yeah, the, uh, do it. Star Wars Celebration Live has been nominated in the events and live streams category. Uh, Headspace and Star Wars Collaboration, which is the Star Wars uh, Mindful Minute and Meditation stuff that mm -hmm. they did, uh, has been nominated for video series. And um, the Star Wars recipes that they've been doing for mm -hmm. the for the social channels have been nominated for food and drink. All very cool, but especially the one Anthony's in. Go yeah. vote. Especially Star Wars Celebration. Yeah. Thank you very much. Go vote. Go do it. That's great. Okay, last thing for real. I need this game biblically. This is a new game coming from Devolver and uh, Nereal. This is The Crush House. Uh, this is a game. Made set, specifically for me. Set in 1999. Yes! During <laughs> peak reality show. And really, truly during peak reality TV. If you want to show it on my screen, I'll skip around on it a little bit. Uh, you can't hear, but the narrator is like, welcome to the crush house. As it should be. Like, but here's <laughs> the thing. You're not just playing a reality dating show. What you are is you are the production of this reality dating you show. You are the manipulator. So you are trying to uh, create the best moments and capture them correctly. You are pulling the strings. Yeah. Uh, so they, uh, as you skip ahead a little bit, you see uh, you have like the walkie talk you're watching on the edit right now. Uh, you are choosing who goes into the house. You're casting it you're trying to get the best moments and create the most drama and create the best show uh i love this i cannot wait for this you can see the like comments as they go through from production telling you what you should get more of i'm so excited this game was made for me it's i cannot I, wait i cannot think of a more perfect just a more perfect video game to release right now. Right now, it just says coming soon, and you can wishlist it on Steam. We do not have an official release date, and I want one so bad. It just says 2024, so we know it's this year, and that's it, and I want it right now. Sage, huh. have you clicked on their Influencer Hub link? I haven't. On their official website? I have not. Uh, it might be worth clicking on their Influencer Hub and getting in on some of the Crush House. Get on that Crush House list. I didn't know. Look, I didn't know. You Anthony? Look, I didn't know. Listen, everybody Look, just Anthony, needs I to be. Didn't know. Listen, you could if you wanted to, and uh -huh. I'm not saying you should, but I'm uh -huh. saying you could if you saw the tweet uh -huh. that had the Crush House like release from Devolver. Yeah, uh, you could reply to it and tag like not Sage. I can't wait to see you stream this. You could do that. You could do you it. Could I do don't that know if you wanted to. You could say like, if oh you my god, that sort of thing. Not Sage. Have you heard about this? Yeah, and uh, you know. If you wanted to, <laughs> but that's it. That's all the show we have time for. Thank you so much for joining us and spending your morning with us or whatever it is, I suppose in your time zone. But if it's not morning, something's wrong. Something's your wrong. Clock and you should really check that out. Something's wrong. If it's not morning where you are right now, something is wrong with your digestive tract. So check that out as well. Isn't that specific? <laughs> a little tummy ache tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe, leave a comment. You can tell us about your first job. I want to hear all about it. Uh, and also any of the other things we talked about today, we love to hear your opinions on. That's right. I also pulled up from last episode as well. Um, and uh, I just wanted to highlight a comment. This is from uh, Elijah's 4785. Said Harley Quinn is revving up to hold the championship title as the most popular Halloween costume for the fourth time. I mean, with Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn, not, I think that she could do it. Not since, not since the generic Dracula costume. Four years not in since, a row. Not since the ghost 
sheet costume with the holes cut yeah. in it. Has there been a Halloween champion yeah. like Harley Quinn? Yeah. Uh, I'll also read someone who just uh, agreed with me, which is uh, Fly on Wall 81, said about the Sam Raimi stuff, Sage is absolutely right to be driven up the wall by him essentially just reading the back cover of the book. The guy was paid how much to direct and he couldn't set aside a weekend to at least watch the show. No. And I, then I, said, and now I see we agree on this. Yeah. No, <laughs> and we, then they edited it and said, yeah. oh, we all agree on this. Yeah, we all agree. <laughs> we all agree on we this. We all agree. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I said not. it's not terrible in yeah. every case, but it was in this. Yeah. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, thank you once again for yeah. those comments. Thank you for uh, for people who tweet when the show goes live. Mm -hmm. Thank you for people who, uh, to people who suggest stories in the Discord. Remember, you can just join that Discord. That's free, baby. It's free. That's free real estate. If uh, you want to read more about the thing that we were talking about with uh, the Don't Strain, uh, Don't Strange. With Don't Strange. The Life is Strange developers deck uh, nine. Uh, I'm going to put the full story in the Discord too because there was a lot that we didn't get to. There's a lot of just like sensitive stuff in there. Uh, and we also just want to provide you the full context on yeah, that. So I'll make sure that's in the Discord as well if you want to read the rest of that story. Yeah, it's uh, it's great. Uh, Rebecca Valentine always does great work. It's a really great piece. Uh, the Discord is free to join. You don't even have to be subscribed to the channel. You uh, should, but you don't have to. Yeah, uh, obviously we'd love for you to watch on uh, watch on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube. Uh -huh. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, give, us, give us a like and a sub it helps a lot uh also to uh skywalker who asked should we actually at sage mm -hmm. about this game in the replies yeah. yes do an at not just the name yeah, the pr yeah. company needs to know who yeah, she yeah, is yeah. uh and also mm -hmm. thank you uh to everyone who supports us directly here during the show or on patreon we really appreciate it we mm -hmm. are an independent production company so every dollar you give helps. And of course, if you're part of the Patreon, you get bonus stuff in return. Today, we're going to have a bonus clip for you as we do every Friday. Very exciting. Check that out. Patreon.com slash Pixel Circus. We appreciate you so much. Anthony, other than here on this channel, where can they go and watch you? Uh, you can find me everywhere on the internet at A Carboni, except for on Twitch where I'm at Anthony Carboni. And tonight, of course, we will be continuing watching the beautiful idiots run around Midgar in Final Fantasy VII. Sage? Mm hmm where are you? You can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. Uh, you can also watch me in our Floral Dragons one shot tonight. We are doing Hit Point Press's The Field Guide to Floral Dragons, Woo! which you might have heard us talk about on Wednesday, but we're actually playing it tonight. Uh, Xander is going to be uh, DMing a lovely game. We've got Mayana Baron. We've got Luis oh, Carrazza. There he is. We've got there he is. Kendall Lynn. No, it's, yeah, famous, yeah, it's, yeah, famous, yeah. it's famous DM Xander Genre. Please oh come goodness. watch us. We're going to play with Floral Dragons. It's going to be so good. It's going to be lovely and wonderful. That'll be live at 6 p.m. And if you aren't able to catch it live, it'll be on the VODs on Twitch or on YouTube this weekend Ooh. as well. So I'll have, stream a little, I'll have to stream a little early so I can uh, so I can watch that. It's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you all so much. That's that's the number one thing you can do is just go watch that right now. We appreciate it. And when you support people that support our channel, uh, it literally allows us to keep doing what we're doing. So we appreciate that so very, very much. Alex, what about you? Uh, well, you, I'm going to be here this evening too. I'm going to be helping out on the stream. So definitely Woo! go watch it. I'm really excited. I love dragons. So I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. But you can find me on the internet at Alder underscore Mancy, A-L-D-E-R underscore M-A-N-C-Y. And um, lots of fun projects coming up. Yeah. You love ever been you to the subreddit dragons fucking cars, Alex? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wow, everything we've asked Alex today has just been absolutely awful. I'm so sorry, my friend. It's not as bad as it sounds if it helps. We love and appreciate you all so very much. Thank you again for spending your morning with us, and we'll see you over on the Patreon next. That's right. Get out of our house. Bye. <laughs>